murmur. The importance of murmur in sickle cell disease is to look for the ejection cystic murmur over the second left intercostal space, i.e. the pulmonary area. And here you will hear the murmur, which is called hemic murmur or physiologic murmur. And the features will be short duration, soft and quality and uh, in quality and systolic male ejection and bits better healed in suban position and the normal splitting of the second heart sound. Rarely that you may, he you may hear also in the pulmonary area early diastolic murmur which might be associated with pulmonary hypertension and also the tricuspid area which might indicate tricuspid regurgitation, pan murmur, which is associated with severe right sided heart failure. The examination of abdomen will be demonstrated in another video, but here we have to concentrate examination of abdomen in sickle disease patient to look for the scar of splenectomy as well as to look for scar of cholecystectomy. Then to examine the for tenderness all nine quadrants and to look for masses. The mass is important mass is left iliac fossa mass which might be seen in patient who has impacted stool and the mechanism of impacting stool sickle, sickle cell disease patient is because of the overdose of the opioids and decrease intake of fluid as well as the food and immobilization. The other also mass to look for the suprabubic area which is might indicate a neurogenic bladder and this is lead to obstructive uropathy so the patient will have severe tenderness on that area and this is due to overdoses dosage of opioids. Then examination of organomegaly, looking for the, namely the splenomegaly. And sickle cell disease patient, usually they have autosplenectomy during early childhood. But around 15 to 20 percent of patients, they may have persistent splenomegaly into young adulthood. And this seen in patient who has compound heterozygous, for example, associated thalassemia or associated other hemoglobinopathy, such as hemoglobin C disease, hemoglobin D, hemoglobin E, ATC, etc. But the splenomic, tender splenomegaly will be seen in acute splenic, splenic sequestration crisis or splenic abscess or splenic infarction or can be seen in patient who has developed chronic liver disease or sometimes might be seen in infections which can be bacteria, viral or protozoal. And the bacteria might be a salmonella, viral will be hepatitis A, or B or C, or protozoa, namely the schistosomiasis. Then examine for the liver for hepatomegaly, and hepatomegaly may be acute tender or chronic non-tender. The acute tender hepatomegaly, it is called right upper quadrant syndrome, or they call it other, other name is acute hepatic syndrome. And the patient here, they will have jaundice, tender liver, or tender hepatomegaly and altered liver enzymes. The, the end seen in acute hepatic sequestration crisis, acute hepatic cell crisis, acute hepatitis, hepatitis due to hepatitis A, B, or C, or even Epstein Barr virus, and acute cholangitis with or without acute associated acute cholecystitis. And lastly seen in patient who has severe intrahepatic cholestasis of the sickle cell patient. 
The other one is the chronic non-tender hepatomegaly, seen part of the as part as part of the extramedullary hematopoiesis states, for uh, so example, associated thalassemia, or seen in right side heart failure, or can be seen as fatty liver or iron overload. In sickle patient for signs of DVT, which be and also signs of bone infarcts looking to the shafts of the patients for signs of, of, uh, of inflammation, edema, tenderness, erythematous skin. Then also to look for signs of chronic osteomyelitis, which is uncommon sign, looking for the fistula formation with maybe pussing, pus discharges coming out from that fistula with granulation tissue beside it, around it. Look also for the signs of the leg ulcers and also lower limb edema in the medial, medial malleolus. Okay. Look for previous hip replacement surgery, total hip replacement surgery. You're looking for the scar on, the, on this area. Then, lastly, you look for the how to look for the uh, the shortening of the uh, of the hip, indicating avascular necrosis. Simply, you'll go, you'll go for the look for the anterior superior iliac spine, and locate also the medial malleolus. Make the patient also comfortable with relaxing of the lower limb, and should not be any to eliminate any contracture. Then you bring the tape and put it from the anterior superior spine. You deeply measure it into the middle mirrors and from the other side also you put it there and you till the end of the the point of middle mirrors and the shortening of the of the limb, if it is more than two centimeters difference from the the shorter one, the shorter one indicates that the patient has avascular necrosis on that side, which deficit. And don't forget to to end your examination by complete neurological examination if it's indicated, because those patients they may have cerebrovascular disease during their lifetime.